is Michelle with Dasami Publishing with a new episode of the Dasami Bookworm Podcast. On prior podcasts, I've discussed editing lessons and a few suggestions. And then in another one, I've offered some creative ideas about writing and where to go. So what I've decided to talk about today is short stories versus novels. And what's in the middle is a novella. Obviously, short stories are shorter than novellas, and novellas are shorter than novels. Writing a novel can be an intimidating prospect. So sometimes it's the best idea to start with a short story. That gives you the opportunity to create your characters, create their personalities to see where it might go. I'm going to use the example of one of my favorite authors, Sue Grafton. She wrote the Alphabet series, A is for Alibi, B is for Burglar, went all the way to Y before she unfortunately passed away. But in the beginning, she wrote a short story called The Parker Shotgun. It was uh, less than 1,200 words and it was five pages. That provided her with the opportunity to create the character Kinsey Milholm and develop her personality, her quirks, her characteristics, and then also create a short story that involved other characters so that they can expand upon it. Short stories can also become a novel because although you've you've created the plot and then you've discovered uh, A kills B and all of the part in the middle. So in a murder mystery, because they're my favorite, we have uh, why, you know, the means, motive, and opportunity for figuring out who killed them. That's the basic. But there's the other stories, the other parts of the characters that uh, that lead into the development of the important protagonist or maybe, you know, the, the antagonist. So a short story is a great way to begin because it has to be very, uh, because it is so concise, you, every word needs to carry the, the story forward. And while that's true in a novel, you have a lot more room in a novel to uh, develop the scenes, describe uh, you know, the scene to someone if it's set. For example, say it's set in a gym and you know yoga is going on in one area and there's boxing going on in another and then depending on what your character is doing maybe they've gone in for the boxing um, maybe they're a private detective and they're spying on someone doing the yoga that scene will set itself in the gym the other opportunity is that you can decide exactly how you feel about writing the short story and once you've started with it, that might be just chapter one, which might lead to chapter two, which might lead to chapter four. Writing a novel, as I said earlier, the idea of, you know, 60,000 words, 100,000 words is very intimidating. But starting with 2,000 words and creating your, your basic protagonist and antagonist, and then you can add the other characters in. The plot, you know, how, um, how important is or well structured is a plot. Now there's two ways to go. There are those writers who sit down and just start writing. As a matter of fact, uh, they were saying Stephen King, we were having the conversation, Stephen King writes that way. Sits down, has the idea, and just goes for it. Then there are other authors who will uh, outline everything ahead of time. They will have the plot from beginning to end. They'll have the character descriptions done. They'll, if it's a fantasy, they will create their world. And with fantasies, it's sometimes a good idea because you need the foundation of the world in order to develop the story. So if you want to go, rather than mysteries, just because it's my favorite, but say you wanted to develop a fantasy, 
Think about your world. Think about the characters in it. Think about uh, the atmosphere. If it's if it's a new world, uh, you know the the flora, the fauna, what they live on, what the people look like, and by writing all of that ahead of time, that gives you the foundation so that when you you go to write your characters, you know exactly what your character is like. Now you can do this even if you want to just start the story and go forward, because with ha if you've done that basic part of the descriptions, you can still have the ideas and the plot going forward. Or you might to want to detail the plot and say, yes, I want it to... The, uh, the fantasy world is going to start here. This is the problem with the protagonist. This is the arc the story is going to take. This is how it's going to end. And then you've got a path to follow. With the fantasy world, what's most important is that you are most familiar with that world. You know it inside and out. You know the characters, you know what they're going to do, how they feel about things. Even if you've done that, you've written character descriptions and you know exactly what they're like, as you write the story, sometimes the characters may change in the story. Not that your antagonist will become a protagonist, but there might be smaller characteristics that come alive in a certain scene that you never thought about. The most important part of a fantasy is that you are the creator and maker of that world. So whatever it is you, you want to do and create, you have the ability to, to do that. When you're writing a novel, the same is true if it's a, a mystery. You are the creator of that world. You're the creator of the mystery. So it can go anywhere you want it to go. There's no prescriptive part to it unless you want to do that, depending on your organization for it. So again, for plotting, if you want to just sit down and write it, there's famous authors that do it that way. If you want to develop everything before you sit down to write it, absolutely, positively, that is a valid way to write. The most important aspect of being a writer is writing what's comfortable to you, writing what you know about, and then creating the characters that have depth so that when people see that, you know, they'll either love the character, hate them, but they're drawn into the story, whether it's plot driven or character driven. Even though it's plot driven, those characters are important. And if you write, written a story that is very character driven you still need the plot but the depth of characters will keep the reader turning the page and that's ultimately what you want them to do is turn that page to see the next part and turn the next page to find out what's going on and that's when you know a really good story when you absolutely cannot put the book down whether it's the plot or the characters so think of it this way, if you'd love to start a novel, but it's too intimidating, consider writing a short story. Just start with, look at a photograph, and I've suggested that before, ideas for stories can be a photograph. Look at that photograph, give it the depth, think about the people in it, think about the scene, and the more you drill down into it, the more complex your characters will be, the more complex your plot will be. And then, when you've written your short story, then you have the confidence to say, yes, I can write the novel. I often give this as an example when we say about writing 100,000 words. When you have a cake, you don't eat the whole cake. You don't stuff it in your mouth. You have that cake and you take off a slice, put it on a plate, grab your fork or spoon, and then you take a small bite of that slice of the cake. And then as you go through it, that slice will soon disappear. 
and then if you have another slice and before you know it the cake is gone preferably not in one sitting but you know depending on how the day is gone but it is a good analogy to think that we're so intimidated and overwhelmed by large projects so remember cut them down into small bite-sized pieces so take that novel or that novella and cut it down into a short story. Create your characters from there. Give them the depth, the characteristics, the personality that you want them to have. And once you've done that, you'll feel like you've accomplished something, which of course you have. You've created a beautiful story. That will give you the confidence to go on and write that novella or write that 100,000 word novel. So this podcast has just been about giving you a few ideas to think about to not be overwhelmed by that novel when you're writing it and to enjoy the creative process of writing. It's so important. So my shout out, as I always like to have, is to new writers who are trying to write that first word, that first sentence, that first paragraph, that first page. Have courage. Go on. You can do it. And have, have the faith in yourself to know that, yes, I love writing. I can create. My shout out goes to you. So once again, this is Michelle, Jasami Bookworm Podcast, wishing you a sunny day. Mm-hmm.